What's up Scrappy peeps? It's Adele from Mickey Quill and today we are looking at group photos. Now group photos can be, I find them a little bit tricky to scrap especially on a smaller sized layout not a 12 by 12 so this one is a 9 by 12 and I do sometimes find them uh, a little bit difficult because there's so much going on, so many faces, so many different um, clothes and I I just wanted to have a bit of a chat. Uh, uh, do you scrap a lot of group photos or do you tend to, and when I say group I mean maybe like five or more people in the same photo. Uh, this These photos are of um, our inside of the family, the Toomeys, and we don't get to see them very often. We only get to see them a few times uh, a year usually. And uh, two of Aaron's siblings live, one of them lives in a different state and one of them lives in a different country at the moment. And so it's very difficult for all of us to get uh, together. And I think this was the first time we'd all been together for about four years or so. Uh, and so it was really nice. So of course we had to take some group shots. Uh, and these were the first group family photos with the grandchildren, with Archie in here. I think this is when I was, yes, it was when I was pregnant with Violet. So she's not, she hasn't popped out yet. Uh, but when we take group photos, we always tend to take a normal one and then a silly photo. And it, they're something that I have really treasured, the silly photos over the years, uh, especially as Aaron's siblings get older uh, it's interesting to see, you know, the a five-year-old silly face compared to a 14-year-old silly face when they grow up a little bit. Uh, and yeah, so whenever we take a group photo, I do you guys take silly photos as well? Or do you typically just take um, smiling photos where everyone's looking directly at the camera? When I scrap group photos, and especially when I'm using a smaller sized layout, I typically connect them together and I do that for a couple of reasons one I find it really difficult to scrap two four by six photos without joining them together on this sized layout uh, I have done it a few times but I always feel like it looks a bit clunky and I can't I just can't make it work so I found a, a format that I like um, and sometimes when you have a style that you like uh, it's nice to, to stick to it until you get sick of it and then try something different. And at the moment, I'm not sick of it yet. <laughs> and another thing that I try to do when I've got two four by six photos or two group photos is I try to connect them some way with the other elements on the page. So you can see here I'm making this big papery scrap cluster. And this was a really good way for me to use up some scraps that I had lying around on my desk. And luckily, we seem to be a bit of a blue loving family. And I'm the only one in that photo that has gone, oh, and my, and Aaron's stepmom too. But everyone else is wearing blue. Uh, so, of course, the colour that I went for was blue. Uh, and that was an easy choice but if you have got a group photo where there's lots of different clothing and the colors are competing with each other a little bit you could always convert it into black and white uh, you can see here I've got this tiny little scrap my pa my paper was literally like not even half a centimeter a couple of millimeters and so I just grabbed another little bit of that same paper the patterns don't match up but honestly man riding by on a horse wouldn't be able to tell so it's all good um, but I do like to connect them with some sort of visual element as well. So I think having this long paper strip on the left-hand side of the page and then kind of underlapping. Now, I think we talked about that in a previous video. What's the opposite of overlapping? I'm going to call it underlapping. So I underlapped this photo. <laughs> I tucked it in under the paper. And by having those vertical elements, especially that leafy, patterny bit, uh, it really makes your eye travel from one photo to the other one. So if you are trying to scrap, especially on a smaller size layout, uh, that's a trick that you can use to make the layout seem a bit more put together. And it also 
I find by having a big paper layer like this that goes vertically, it grounds the photos a little bit more and um, doesn't make them floating around on the layout so much. So I'm using some clear stickers and clear stickers are something that I do struggle with uh, because a lot of the time I'm using either multiple pattern papers for layering behind my photo or I'm using a pattern paper background or a mixed media background and they can get a little bit lost. Uh, so I decided to jump on the fact that I had a white, nice, crisp background for them to work on. And I'm sticking down quite a few from this Amy Tan sticker booklet. Just trying to see what works. And I know I could stick the clear stickers on to uh, white cardstock. And I've, I've done that before and then cut them out and use them like a normal white backed sticker I guess you could call it uh, but I didn't want to I wanted to try and use them on the, the background and overlap them a little bit so then I was trying to figure out where I was going to put my journaling and I decided to try something that could have gone horribly wrong uh, I'm glad it didn't but it, it, it could have this is the awkward ugly stage there's always whenever you're on a project especially a mixed media one there's always a clunky ugly awkward stage and you've just it's like puberty you've just got to ride your way through it and get to the other side and all will be a little bit better <laughs> but I, I I just wanted something else I felt like the page was a little bit flat um, and so I'm literally adding non-flatness to the page and adding some texture paste through this very old stencil I think this could have been part of a like an Amy Tan pack or a Heidi Swap pack many 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 years ago and I'm using some I first put down some white gesso uh, because I wanted to add some sort of color and I wasn't sure if I was going to use uh, acrylic paint or if I was going to use watercolor and if I hadn't have used the gesso the watercolor wouldn't have uh, sat as nicely on the pattern paper and it would have gone a bit splotchy and just a bit lumpy looking it, it just looks a bit I find that whenever I put watercolor just straight on pattern paper it it makes it look like it hasn't fully dried and um, the color just isn't as bright and vibrant except when you're doing splatters splatters are so tiny that you can't really tell but if you're doing a large bit of color like this you, you can tell a little bit so once that was dry which did I did leave it to dry for a couple of hours um, because I I have very little patience for texture paste these days <laughs> I think it's often because I can't use my heat gun as much uh, if Violet's sleeping. It's the one thing that she wakes up to. She can sleep through vacuuming, the washing machine, people reconstructing their bathrooms next door. But for some reason, I don't know if it's the pitch of my heat gun, it wakes her up every time I've tried closing my door, her door. No, it doesn't work. Uh, so I can't do a heat gun things while she's sleeping, which makes uh, filming a little bit tricky sometimes. But I typed up my journaling on uh, my electric typewriter, which I haven't used in my new house yet. It's shoved right up at the top of the cupboard. That's the problem. If I find that if things are out of sight, they're out of my mind. Uh, so I need to try and find a more permanent house for that, I think, so that I can use it more often. Uh, while I am chatting away, I wanted to let you know, in case you missed out on the announcement, but the Inky June Marathon is starting next week, which is very exciting. Uh, I, If you are a new inklet, um, the Inky June Marathon is something that I did for a couple of years before kids came along. <laughs> then my time kind of shrunk a little bit, uh, but I upload a video every single day in the month of June to YouTube. And I did the Inky June Marathon when I wasn't posting either. Maybe I didn't have Let's Get Inky yet, or I wasn't posting on there frequently. Um, so it was only on my Inky Quill YouTube channel, but this year I am alternating between the two channels. So on the 1st of June, let me check my calendar. Uh, on the 1st of June, there will be a video on Inky Quill. And then the next day there'll be one on Let's Get Inky and then so forth. And it'll bounce back and forth. And I've got lots of exciting things. They're not all uh, process videos. There's all sorts of things. There's a craft room tour 
There's some journal flips in there as well. Um, what else have we got? We have lots of grab fives. Um, my must have supplies for art journaling and also for scrapbooking. There's journal with me. There's art journaling, junk journaling, project life, scrapbooking, DIY and bellies. There's a little bit of everything. So make sure that you're subscribed to both channels uh, and you can turn on the notification bell if you want to be notified when the video pops up. Um, but I'm really excited and I'm hoping, I've just got to work out um, a couple of things, but I'm hoping to end June with a live stream. So stay tuned for that date, um, but it will be towards the the end of June. June finishes on a Tuesday. So I don't know if it will be the weekend before that or it might be the first weekend of July. We'll, we'll figure it out when we get a little bit closer. Um, but I'm really excited and I wanted to give you guys some extra videos because I know where there's a lot of us um, who are still at home and not working and I wanted to, to treat you guys to a bit of extra scrappy creativeness. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I will see you in a couple of days very soon. Bye!